Now it's Councillor Hogg. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think this is the most significant and exciting paper that I've seen since I joined the Council. <coughs> it proposes that the leader takes personal charge of regenerating the two most deprived wards in the borough and that the Council invests up to £100 million to start that task. Uh, this is fantastic news. Um, and I think the money is crucial, but the change of policy is also important. Wandsworth Council is now targeting interventions on the most deprived parts of the borough based on data and is also using its massive uh, borrowing capabilities um, as the means to that end. And I think those are both very welcome developments. Um, I will talk about the impact on Latchmere, um, the ward I represent, and also um, how changes to the built environment can help create balanced communities across the whole borough. Um, now, I was clear when I joined the council that it was to change the ward I represent, not to keep it the same. Um, and we should admit that Wandsworth Council uh, created the Winstanley Estate. We took a, in the, in the late 60s or early 70s, we, we took an area of Victorian housing, which I'm told is, is rather like the Tonsleys is now, and, and cleared that and built an estate which, as the Kingham report into the riots pointed out, we made into the 1% of worst places to grow up as a child in the entire country. Um, there are dreadful health, education and crime issues on that estate, but I'd just briefly like to look at one housing idea. Um, there's chronic um, overcrowding problems in Latchmere, but the problem is that there isn't enough housing. It's not that the housing on the estates is too dense. So if we were to go back and look at the York Road estate, for instance, and build it today, we could easily double its density, and with decent design, we could actually make the open areas work better and be more attractive, and people would be happier there. That's why this plan is so exciting. We can deliver more housing for local people to rent and buy, while also focusing on the most needy in our entire borough. Now, it's been said that these proposals could end uh, Labour representation in Battersea and Putney. Uh, maybe. But, you know, to keep voters poor, to keep them Labour, is bad politics. Um, but it's also wrong. This is at least a 10 or 20 year project, and I think it bears comparison with the Nine Elms project. Um, as we are correcting the mistakes of the late 60s and early 70s in Latchmere, um, we should learn them for Nine Elms. We should insist on balanced, integrated communities. We should stand up to developers and other vested interests, and we should avoid enclaves of monocultures, just one type of people, extreme poverty or extreme wealth. Uh, and many good things can be taken from the Nine Elms experience so far. Um, the long-term commitment, the innovative financing, and as Councillor Ellis touched on, uh, a sort of forensic master plan as well. Um, and in both cases, uh, that's Nine Elms and the estate renewal, um, we should make the uh, precious investment work for local people through apprenticeships and promoting uh, the interests of local contractors. Um, many speakers have commented that the residents will have to take control, but this will not be easy. Um, there are no residence estates on the Winstanley Estate. Uh, there's no community room. Half the people there don't have internet access or computers at home. But I'd just briefly like to outline um, a few of the aspirational ideas that I've heard there recently. Uh, Gian Petro in Ieni wants to launch Cookery Club uh, to stop his teenage son and their friends getting into trouble. James Kay would like a residence association to improve Arthur Newton House. Sheila Marshall has the basics for a mentoring scheme to get people into the professions. And the teenagers then make videos of their time to inspire other children. Uh, Nezhet Sabir, um, appalled by how few local children are going to university, wants to set up tutoring in culture and maths after school. Um, none of these schemes have got off the ground yet. Um, they need your support, and I think this is a task for all of us. Um, we should all get behind this plan and make Latchmere and Roehampton exemplar schemes for community commissioned engagement. Um, and then I will join you in rolling them out to all wards so we can make one borough that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Councillor Maxwell Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's, it's, I'm rather enjoying this, I must say. It makes me feel sort of good inside this uh, debate. Um, rather like Councillors Belton and Hogg, I'm also excited by our 
by the plans, but I have to say the excitement in their voices is in, is in remarkable uh, proportion to the amount of money we're planning on spending. Um, so there we are. maybe there's a bit of a, a party divide there. Um, I don't think anyone should really underestimate the risks we're taking uh, with this as well. But I think the greater risks would have been to have done nothing at all. Last summer's greedy, selfish acts of looting uh, were just one symptom of a far wider malaise, both here and elsewhere in the capital and in the country. Uh, some people's actions are always going to be inexplicable, and we can't prevent random outbursts of crim criminal activity, and neither should we really try to moderate human behavior too greatly. Um, we've suffered in recent years from a rash of government-appointed SARs and uh, self-appointed policy experts who crop up a lot, a lot on the BBC Radio 4 Today program but seem to do very little. Um, I say if you want something to actually be done, come here, come to Wandsworth, and we'll show you how to do it. I would, though, uh, just on some of the comments colleagues made, I would like to make a point about the role for ward councillors in any regeneration scheme, specifically here, Latchmere, Roehampton, to an extent, St Mary's Park. Um, of course, they should be involved, and we, they should willingly give of their time and local expertise to make sure these, these plans are as successful as they can be. Um, but we are all councillors of this borough, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn when I suggest we all want these plans to work once the detail has been thrashed out. Uh, and as Councillor Hogg said, it is in all of our responsibilities to make sure that they do indeed work. What we don't want is another politician's prestige project. This isn't about our vanity. It's about how much we can look at this problem, the broader problems objectively, and focus on the outcomes we want to achieve with public money. Our track record in this borough of spending taxpayers' money wisely should mean the project will never become synonymous with waste or mismanagement. Uh, in other parts of the country, we've seen plenty of this, not least in recent times. Uh, on that note, you might have seen today that um, figures uh, on the Gershon uh, efficiency drive revealed that uh, most of the attempts to save money actually cost more than they save, uh, plus ça change when it comes to efficiency drives. Um, what concerns me or what uh, interests me about our own regeneration scheme in Wandsworth is not the pounds, shilling and pence that we spend, because that's a very narrow focus on inputs. Um, nor is it really, as Councillor Senior said, about the bricks and mortar. They're important, obviously, but they're just the output. Um, it's the outcomes we must focus on, and our desire to be judged on how well we've helped tackle the entrenched problems on our estates. Uh, above all, we should want to help people raise their aspirations, and equally, we need to raise our own aspirations for them. Uh, we need to reject what Michael Gove and others have called the soft bigotry of low expectations, it's something uh, Catherine Burblesing has written and spoken very powerfully about in terms of education. Um, everyone is in favor of aspiration in theory. On this side of the uh, chamber in particular, we are in favor of it in practice too, because we believe in achieving and in celebrating the success that comes when you deliver on aspirations. Uh, we want our communities and the individuals within them to be successful. And success here shouldn't just be a marginal improvement in a few indicators. We want to see lives transformed, we want to see potential fulfilled, and we want to see ambitions raised. As I said at the start, there are risks in all this. We don't take lightly the idea of borrowing and spending this much of other people's money, even if it is on very beneficial terms. Uh, but it's our job to focus on the rewards that all of our residents can get from this, regardless of the hand they've been dealt and where exactly they live in the borough. Um, the direct benefits of a lot of what we will be proposing may be fairly focused and narrow, but the indirect benefits could be much, much broader, and I hope very much that they will be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maxwell Scott. Councillor Carpenter. Madam Mayor, may I join in the welcome for this paper in the words of our Lord? Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 19 and 9 just persons. Those of you who have studied the paper will see that it places particular emphasis on males aged 18 to 24, a group which current government and council initiatives target poorly. Currently, much of the work with this cohort is undertaken by the voluntary sector. It is for this reason that in our amendment to the council's budget, we proposed additional resources for the education and youth services and the voluntary sector. I am disappointed that this amendment was not supported by the majority party. 
There is no point in willing the end if you do not also will the means. Turning specifically to Roehampton, we should remember that when it was built 60 years ago, the Orphan Estate was a paradise, a green parkland populated with housing built to the then highest standards by the leading architects of the day. These people had vision. Talk to any of the original tenants who moved from the slums and bomb sites of the East End to the Orton. Their lives were transformed. Not the pathetic apology for affordable housing we see put forward at successive planning application committees by property developers whose only motivation is greed and to whom the majority party pander. We need a new vision for the 21st century. That is why I welcome the council's intention to put its own funding behind future regeneration rather than relying on the greed of the market to provide a solution. We have seen that where that leads us in the Vauxhall Nine Hounds developments. We also need to learn the lessons from the previous attempts at regeneration in Roehampton. It is vital that any proposals emerge as a result of bottom-up consultation, not top-down imposition. We do not want a repeat of the chorus of opposition that arose following the proposal to demolish Albrook House and the surrounding blocks. I welcome the commitment of the leader and the chief executive to lead the regeneration process, but we need to create democratic structures, perhaps based around the Roehampton partnership, in which there is a genuine voice for local residents. I am certainly prepared to pay my part alongside the other ward councillors in bringing this initiative to fruition. Madam Mayor, one day in the 1980s, I opened my Financial Times to find a full page advertisement depicting a medieval village in a valley with a fairy tale castle on the hill nearby and a full moon rising behind it, much like the moon we saw today as we came to the council meeting. Beside it was the story of the wise prince. One day he arrived in the village with his entourage. He admired the village and the hill nearby and asked the villagers, what could we do to make the hill look even more handsome? And the villagers thought and discussed and agreed the hill would look much nicer with a castle on it. So the villagers and the prince and his entourage set about fetching and carrying and gradually a fairy tale castle took shape on the hill. And when it was finished, the villagers and the prince and his entourage had a big party to open the castle. And the next day, the prince and his entourage went on their way. Over the years, the fame of the village and its fairy tale castle spread throughout the land. Visitors came from far and wide to admire and wonder at it. And when the visitors asked the villagers, who built the fairy tale castle? The villagers replied, why? We did it all ourselves. Madam Mayor, let us be wise princes. Thank you for that bedtime story, Councillor Carpenter. Um, <laughs> Councillor Govindia. Madam Mayor, I hope not to detain you from your bed too long. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think as this debate started, there was a great danger that uh, we were all going to be in huge agreement, but I'm glad that um, some differences um, towards the end have emerged. And I think it's important to dwell on those differences because I don't want uh, the council to go away thinking um, there's an open checkbook, 100 million pounds been borrowed, there is a big party to be had, everyone's going to sit around the table forever talking uh, the fine detailed points of something to do and nothing gets delivered. I mean this to be a business-like contribution to the regeneration of two estates, but more importantly than that, to actually act as a model for aspiration for people across the borough here and elsewhere. We want to make it work for the people, not necessarily just for the buildings that make up these estates. These estates can be knocked down and rebuilt relatively simply, in a sense, easy thing. That is an easy thing to do. The more difficult thing is to actually change the lives of the people. And we are all, both sides, come into politics not for the fun of it, although that helps, uh, not for the various perks and privileges we get, although that makes life easier. But we come to make a difference in lives of people, I hope. 
And certainly for me, I'd say that politics has been a, a hugely rewarding experience. I didn't have the advantages a lot of other people I knew had. But what I had was a power behind me in my parents and others to will me along the path of actually reaching for something that others had. To attain what others had through hard work and endeavor, saying that what they have is, an, is not something to be jealous about, but is something to aspire to. I want our people and our states to share that vision that they can, they too can have it if they apply themselves. And we have a role in helping both open their eyes and also make it easier for them to walk through the doors that we might open. But not all of it is going to be done by us. And I think that if, if there is a division between us, it might be that. Council is not the ultimate and total provider of everything. People are going to have to take these opportunities themselves and they are going to have to put some effort into making a success of those opportunities. I'm glad Councillor Hogg mentions four or five individuals who have bright ideas and great vision for themselves and their community. But a lot of that vision will have to be realized through a partnership approach and much of that work will have to be done by them. I am not interested in people saying, oh, I've got this great idea, if only you give me so much, I will make it a success. I have seen that kind of community enterprises in public life before, and they haven't lasted, and generally they have failed. People have to own the solutions that they come up with, and they have to make a success of that solution, and we will help them along. Councillor Belton talked about his contribution to Doddington and, and in St. James's. Uh, and I, I acknowledge that, that he was instrumental and perhaps key in some, making some of those things work uh, in, in, in a successful way as they have. And indeed, that's why I had an early discussion with him about what I think we can achieve with, with this 100 million pounds. And I think he has a role, and I know he has a role. I know he knows his estates well. And I, forgive me, Councillor Hogg and Councillor Speck, I, it's partly because I have a, a relationship with Councillor Belton that I can... I can discuss both the past and the future, because we share certainly the past, if not the future. And one of these days, he'll finish his book. And when he finishes his book, when he finishes his book, Councillor Ellis will know whether it is 60s or 70s. So we all await, we all await that history lesson. But uh, until that is, we are allowed to make a few mistakes, I guess. Now, councillors have a role. Local communities have a role. But I really do not believe that that role can be forever discussing. We have to get on with the task because the, the challenge is immense and time is not huge, I have to say. I also uh, was impressed by the, the Battersea buzz. And you know, if you turn to the Council question 11 and the answer says lots of things that have happened since those dreadful days in August. But what also happened was that there was an enormous amount of goodwill that came from within the community that had been affected, a community that was willing to share and give. And we need to tap into that willingness to give and share. We need to tap into their reaching out to the affected communities. And I think they have a huge role to play. A couple of weeks ago, I visited a, 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 a firm in Ellsfield where 60 or 70 people work in a, a, in, in a, in a legal firm they're all willing to provide some sort of mentoring or other help for young people because they believe that they are part of the society in which they work and they want to make a difference. I want those kind of initiatives and those kind of ideas to come to fore to help not just in Lachmi and, 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 and Roehampton but elsewhere because this paper is focused on two estates and two areas but it is not entirely going to be about those two places. They are at the moment our focus, but the rest of the borough too has pockets of deprivation where our approach and our willingness to help and reach out will help. Madam Mayor, can I just say that the points about the success criteria are fundamental and crucial. It was something that uh, was previously aired by a number of my colleagues here, saying we need to, having borrowed this money, we need to know why we are going to spend it, where we are going to spend it, and what are we going to measure the success by. It is important that we, we get public health outcomes 
to be different from what they are. We know already what is wrong in some of these places. We need to say exactly how much right it should be as a result of our spend. Because this council has generally not borrowed. My colleagues are not great borrowers, but they are purposeful borrowers. And being purposeful borrowers, we need to know why we are borrowing it, what are we going to get as a result of that spend, and yes, in defining what we are going to get out as a result of that spend, it is important that we both sides agree. Community has a say in it, but ultimately we must drive it from here and drive it so that it is implemented, successfully done so. But I just also reach out to the Nine Elms thing. I see Nine Elms slightly differently from Councillor Carpenter and Councillor Hogg. I see Nine Elms as providing huge opportunities for employment for our young people. What I think we need to do is to make sure that our young people have the right training in the two FE institutions, one in Lambeth and one in Wandsworth. The right kind of teaching is got done. They are prepared at, at, at colleges for the world of work so that they are able to take the opportunities when it knocks on their doors. There's a 25, 30 year construction program in Nine Elms. If the kids get it right, they could make a whole life's living out of Nine Elms. I want our young people to take, make a living out of Nine Elms. I don't particularly want to stop others from making it, but I think our people come first. I want to make sure that those opportunities on their doorstep are available to them, uh, rather than s sloth and crime that sometimes affects their lives. Madam Mayor, this is a risk we are taking indeed. It is a challenge for us all, but unless we are going to be measured in what we want, rather than to be too fanciful, I think we will fail. I want us to be mature and measured in, what we, in the task we've set up for us. Thank you, Councillor Govindia. I think that's been a very f famous debate tonight, we've all heard. Um, and now, paragraph 68 is for information. I'm sure we all agree with that. Thank you.